life struggling with it right now? Depression is associated with persistently negative feelings, significantly affecting your thoughts and behaviors. It's important to educate yourself on matters of depression, to sift through the misconceptions and avoid doing anything that might worsen the symptoms for you and those around you. With that said, here are seven things you should never do when you're depressed. One, keep it a secret. Reaching out to the people you love and building a support system to help you in your struggle against depression is a wise choice to begin with. Many people suffer in silence, keeping their mental illness a secret because either they're in denial, ashamed of it, or think they can conquer it on their own. And while you might be convinced that you're doing everyone else a favor by keeping your problems to yourself, it isn't true. Depression isn't something that should ever be kept a secret. Two, drink alcohol. Do you often drown your sorrows with alcohol? While drinking might help you numb what you're feeling right now, there's a very high possibility of you becoming dependent on it the more you use it to numb your depression. In fact, alcoholism and substance abuse is common among those suffering from depression, so don't just trade in one problem for another. Three, isolate yourself. Do you have the constant urge to push people away? Do you lock yourself up in your room all day? Depression may make you believe that you need to be on your own all the time and that no one wants to be around you. But in reality, that isn't true. There are people out there who care about you. Your relationships and social activities can help curb the intense feelings of loneliness and emptiness that depression often brings with it. Four, blame yourself. Do you often blame yourself for being depressed? If you do, we're here to tell you that it's not your fault. It can happen to just about anyone, so don't beat yourself up for feeling this way. There are dozens of different reasons outside of your control that might be making you depressed, whether it's because of your genes, your brain chemistry, your upbringing, or your environment. So don't think that any of this is your fault. Five, neglect your self-care. Have you been laying on the sofa binge watching movies on Netflix the whole day? When was the last time you went for a jog or had your nails done? Yes, depression can make you lose interest in the things you once enjoyed. But the thing is, taking care of your physical health can make a world of difference in alleviating your stress and helping you cope with your depression. The appropriate amount of sleep, exercise, and healthy eating can help you feel better. Six, let it define you. Did you know that your therapist never refers to you as depressed, but rather as someone with depression? There's actually a very good reason behind it. Because mental health care professionals believe that you shouldn't be defined by your mental illness. You're more than your diagnosis. Depression changes you in a lot of painful ways. It affects the way you view yourself and the world around you. But it's important to never lose sight of the person you are without it. So remind yourself of all the wonderful qualities that make you who you are. And don't let depression stop you from doing the things you love or going after your dreams. And seven, give up hope. Finally, but perhaps most importantly, no matter how severe your depression may get, always remember there is still hope that someday you'll get better. The battle against mental illness is long and difficult, and it certainly won't happen overnight. But it's one that's worth fighting for, and it's certainly one you can win. Because as scary and painful and overwhelming as it can feel sometimes, you're not hopeless in your dream of a brighter, happier future for yourself. According to the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance 2018, more than 80% of those who seek treatment successfully recover from their depression. One study even reports that in as early as eight weeks, 58.7% of patients achieved functional remission, meaning they've effectively learned to manage their depression in a way that allows them to live life normally, while 15.9% fully recover. So in addition to being a serious mental illness, fortunately, Depression is also highly treatable. With a strong support system, professional help, and the right lifestyle changes, you can win your fight against mental illness and leave your depression behind. Also, if you feel you relate to any of these signs or symptoms or disorders talked about on our channel, make sure you try and seek professional help, just to be sure. Because looking after your mental health is just as important as looking after your physical health. Are you or someone close to you battling this mental disorder? Can you think of any other practices to be avoided by those suffering from depression? Just like physical health, you have to maintain it by taking care of your body with exercise and eating the right food and going to the doctor when you're injured or ill. With mental health, you also have to take daily action to be healthy. And when things are stressful, I have to take extra care to manage my mental health. So for example, when I was in grad school or when I'm pregnant or postpartum, and right now when we as a global community are fighting a pandemic, we all have to take a little extra care of our mental health. What I'm going to talk about today is more about maintaining mental health than it is about getting out of the deepest pit of depression. When you're deep in a depressive episode, it can be really hard to see any light. 
It feels like you're at the bottom of a pit and can't imagine what it feels like to be out of it. At that place, often all you can do is tiny steps and hopefully get some help to get out of there. So don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed by my routine. Just choose one little thing to start with and then take the next step when you can. Number one, morning routine. So the first thing I do every day is getting on my knees and praying. I express gratitude for the day and for my life and the opportunity I have to do good in the world. And that connection with God, for me, helps me feel loved and purposeful through my day. If you're not religious, you could do some meditation or a breathing exercise here. I try not to look at my phone first thing in the morning because I want to start my day intentionally, the way I want it to be. If I open social media, I'm letting others choose what I take in, and that could be positive, negative, stressful, uplifting, or critical. And so, I just choose to start my day with some quiet time. I do a little reading, and then I write out my goals and priorities for the day. And right now, with all the news that's frightening, I choose to listen to the news around lunchtime, once a day, so that I don't get constantly stressed out and have time to process it during my waking hours. And speaking of waking hours, let's talk about sleep for a minute. I have three kids, five and under, so I usually wake up before them to get some quiet time to set my intention for the day. My natural wake up time is around 5 a.m. I don't usually set an alarm, but to wake up then, I often go to bed between 9 to 10 p.m. I'm not fighting my natural biorhythms. I just listen to my body, and this is the schedule that works best for me personally. For many people, they might have different sleep needs or a different schedule. Sleep is super important to managing depression. There's a massive correlation between sleep problems and depression. Lack of sleep can cause depression, and getting good sleep can actually let your brain heal from depression. So I really value my sleep. I have old friends who nicknamed me 905 because I often go to bed at that time and I miss out on some fun for sure, but it's what keeps me healthy, so it's worth it for me. For each person, your sleep needs are different, but getting enough sleep can really make a big difference. One study found that 87% of people with depression who resolved their insomnia significantly decreased their depression symptoms. Number two, get dressed and showered. Okay, so after waking up refreshed and taking quiet time to pray, study, and set my intentions for the day, I make sure to get showered and dressed. I found that this can be really hard when you're depressed but being clean and dressed helps me feel more energetic and gets rid of my excuses. I mean, if I have yesterday's makeup all over my face and I'm wearing PJs, it makes it hard for me to want to go out and see friends or be social or get things done. So just get dressed for the day. Then I take my multivitamins and if I remember, I take my omega-3 supplements. And nutrition is an important part of my routine as well. I try to eat a lot of plants and not too much sugar or processed foods but I'm not going to go into that too much right now. Number three, exercise. The other essential part of my mental health maintenance is exercise. There's so much research that proves that exercise is great for mental health. It helps clear brain fog and it helps reduce stress chemicals in your brain. I feel like when I exercise, it just works through a backlog of pent up emotions and I can feel my body relax. I think it also helps me deal with anger and frustration and I just like it. I know a lot of people exercise in the morning, but for me, back when I worked full time, I used to always go climbing or for a hike or run after work. That's when I needed it the most. And it was hard for me to get motivated in the morning, but by afternoon, I was looking forward to it. Now that I'm a full-time mom, I have to be more creative in how I get my exercise in. I often just work out in the yard, gardening, digging in the dirt, and running around the yard with my wheelbarrow. Or I'll do some yoga on TV or go for a walk with my kids or pull them behind my bike. Now that we're stuck in our homes with the coronavirus pandemic, I'm doing more inside workouts. I like the seven minute workouts on my phone or the fitness marshal on YouTube. Number four, nature time. This takes me back to another aspect of my mental health routine that is really important for me, outside time. I need nature. I need to see the sky and soak in some sun. I'm fortunate to live in a beautiful place and I take advantage of that by getting outside. There is some research showing that sunshine and nature and being outside changes our physiology. It slows our heart rate and decreases stress chemicals and stuff. But regardless of the research, I can just feel the difference for me. If you can't get outside, open your windows, 
sit on your porch, or if you can't do any of that, then you could spend some time looking at beautiful landscape photography or a nature film. Your brain has the ability to bring to mind the feelings of nature just by imagining it. Number five, my evening routine. My evening routine looks like getting my kids to bed and then taking some quiet time for myself. I usually take a hot bath and read a book or an archeology span journal. I'm kind of nerdy, but that's what I like. Even though I have very few hours to work on my passion project, these videos, I don't usually work in the evenings because it would just stress me out a little and I need the downtime to stay healthy. So then before bed, I write in my journal. I often take the time to write about my wins and accomplishments of the day so that I can remember them because it's my natural habit to dwell on my mistakes and shortcomings. So I write about my wins and then I pray a prayer of gratitude and talk with my heavenly father about my day. Again, gratitude practice is an essential habit of mental health and it's been shown to be an effective treatment for depression. So you can pray about it like me, express gratitude as a family, which we do at dinner time, or write about it, whatever works for you. And then I go to bed. I try not to spend too much time looking at screens before bed, but if I do, I choose some calming documentary or a mudlarking channel like Nicola White's. If you don't know what mudlarking is, it's just finding historical bits of treasures on Thames in London. Anyways, I find it relaxing. I encourage people not to be on TV because it's just not super great for your brain. But if you do, choose a short and calming show. Lastly, other self-care. For me, that includes scheduling in some time for my hobby. I have tons of hobbies, but because I'm so busy with kids, I really don't have time to do most of them. But I make sure to carve out about two hours a week to do at least one of them. Right now, that's metal detecting, which is something fun and relaxing for me. I put it on the calendar so that I make sure it happens. I also take the Sabbath off. No work, no housework. I don't check my work email. I let my brain completely focus on other things. Mostly my family, which is also exhausting, but it's a day that is different from the others. And I make sure to have social time as well. Having social interactions is really essential for mental health. Our brains are inherently social. We are social creatures. So right now, this is going to be an extra challenge with the coronavirus. I'm taking the time to call up old friends. I have some groups I'm hanging out with on Zoom. And when we're not on lockdown, I meet up with friends to let the kids play or to go out to lunch or whatever. So social isolation can all contribute to depression, but you can prevent depression during stressful times like the pandemic and social distancing by using daily habits that promote mental health. Depression is treatable, and there are some simple things you can do every day to prevent depression and stay mentally healthy. I hope you can find some things from this list that help you figure out a way to maintain your mental health today, this week, and during the crazy pandemic that we're going through. And remember, you're braver than you know and stronger than you think. Thanks for watching and take care.